Welcome to February's Leak Code Challenge. Today's problem is shortest distance to a character. Given a string s and a character c that occurs in s, return an array of integers where the length is equal to the length of the string and the answer i is the shortest distance from s of i to the character c in s. If we have this example here and our character was e, we can see that like the first position is going to be 3 because the closest e is 3 spaces away in the same way fashion, if uh, we had this letter here, we could see that the closest E would be two positions away. Um, yeah. So if we want to s solve this straightforwardly, one might think we could do this in some sort of nested for loop. Start with this position and just go throughout, go through the entire string until we find the first instance of E. So here, like we see with L, we'll find uh, move one, two, three. So we'll go three, two, one. Once we hit E, it'll be like zero. And we can do that like in a nested for loop, right? But there's an issue with that because not only do we need to check everything from the right side, we also need to check what's the closest E to the left side. So that makes it a little bit trickier. Like we could still do it, but we'd have to go from this position to the right and also this position to the very beginning. But there's a very key insight that comes from that kind of thinking. Um, instead of doing it inside of a nested for loop, what if we just went through one pass and stored everything from its leftmost that's going to be the distance, and then everything from the rightmost, which is going to be its distance. So what I mean by that is, if we started here, uh, we might say, hey, count up everything that we see until we see an E. So it might be like one, two, three. Uh, once we see E, we'll go zero. And then each time we increase, we'll go one, and it'll say zero, zero, one, two, three, four, zero. So this kind of indicates to us how far the closest E is to its left side. Now there's an exception to that is these. These numbers don't count because there's no, there's no E right here. That's kind of a mistake. So instead of storing these numbers, what we have to do is store some sort of like placeholder, maybe the infinite number uh, until we see our first E, then we could st start counting them up. Now we'll do the same thing, but from the left side. So this will start with zero and we'll say, okay, count up one, um, two, three, uh, and then four. Sorry, it's not a good way to do this here. Um, and then so on and so forth, counting up all these zeros. But again, the only exception to this would be if this didn't start with an E, we had some other characters here like FFF, we'd have to make these like infinite numbers, some sort of placeholders. Now, if we have these two arrays or these two values, all we need to do is store the minimum number between them, and that's going to be the shortest distance from its left and the shortest distance from its right, and we'll compare them and get the minimum one. The only one you need to be careful about is these uh, initial numbers that don't have one to the right side. So we can either skip all the way until we find the first one, or we'll make some sort of placeholder, which I'm going to use like the infinite. Okay, so let's start by initializing the length of n, which would be the length of string. And what I'm going to do is have three arrays. I'll have the left, the right, and our output. And each one of these are going to be the same. We'll, um, let's see, I guess we'll just make them none times n. And we'll do the same thing for these two like this. Okay, so the first thing is from the left side, right? Uh, what I'll do is first store, I guess I'll call it temp. I'll make it a float of infinite. And we will say for i in range of n, we'll first check to see, hey, is this position, is it equal to our c? Because if it is, then we know that this temp value should equal 0. Otherwise, update our left of i to equal the temp and then increase it by 1. And each time we see our character, it's going to reset. But the very big first ones, because of this infinite, aren't going to increase at all. They'll stay the same. Now we want to go backwards. We want to do the same thing, but we will go backwards for the right. So for i in range of n minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, we're going to do the same thing, but make it to the right side instead. And I'll have to also make sure reset our temp to be infinite here. All right, so now we have our left and right. Now finally, all we need to do is update our output for i in range of n, oops, 
make our output of i equal to the minimum between our right i and left i. And finally, just return that output. OK, so let's make sure this works. Uh, this is that working? 3210100122210. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Let's submit that. And accepted. So time complexity wise is O of n, and we are using some decent amount of space here. So that's also O of n. And the truth is, you don't actually even need these left and right outputs. What you can, or arrays, what you can do is update these values as you move along. And then you don't even need to do this. You could just uh, compare its minimum between what we calculate and what's already in there. Uh, but I want to do this to kind of illustrate better what's going on. Hopefully that helps. So yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.